Recently, the Tejas Mark 1A completed its first flight from Hindustan Aeronautics Limited's new Nashik production line. At first glance, the Mark 1A looks almost identical to the base Tejas MK1, but that's only on the outside. Most of the upgrades are internal and there are a lot of them. Around 40 major improvements in total. HAL and ADA use the MK-1A program to fix every operational issue the IF faced with the Mark 1, improving reliability, turnaround time and combat readiness. When the Tejas Mark 1 first entered service between 2016 and 2019, several countries, including Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Egypt, Argentina and the Philippines, showed interest. But that interest never turned into actual orders. There were three main reasons for this. The MK1 was still an early generation platform. Export customers want a proven platform. Even India's own Air Force was still building confidence in it. But now, everything has changed. With the Mark 1A, India has essentially brought Rafale class capabilities to a much smaller, lighter aircraft. The IF's commitment to 83 Tejas Mark 1A jets sends a strong message that India's Air Force now trusts this aircraft as a frontline fighter. And that's coming from the third most powerful air force in the world. Earlier, potential buyers were hesitant because the IF itself was still ironing out the MK-1's issues. It's fair to say the world was waiting for the Mark 1A to arrive. The base Tejas Mark 1 used the Israeli Yel M2032 mechanically scanned radar. The MK-1A replaces it with the EL M2052 ASA radar, capable of detecting, tracking, and engaging multiple targets simultaneously. It features high-resolution synthetic aperture radar for ground mapping, meaning it can also guide precision bombs. The radar supports track wall skin mode, allowing it to track up to 64 targets while continuing to scan. Now, about the UTOM ESA radar, India's own fire control radar developed by DRDO. The MK-1A's modular architecture allows both the Israeli and Indian radars to fit the same nose section without any structural redesign. Currently, Bhutan offers performance comparable to the ELM-2052. But once upgraded to gallium nitride technology, it's expected to outperform the 2052, possibly even approaching the radar performance of the RB-2AA or APG-83. The first batch of Tejas MK-1A will use the ELM-2052 for faster induction and proven reliability. Later batches will switch to the utom ESA as the standard radar. Now coming to electronic warfare, the MK-1 had only a radar warning receiver and limited countermeasures. The MK-1A, on the other hand, features a fully integrated EW suite that includes radar warning receiver, missile approach warning system countermeasure dispensing system, and external self-protection jammer pods. This means the MK-1A can jam hostile radars, detect threats earlier, and survive much longer in contested airspace. Inside the cockpit, it's a full-blast design with new-generation multifunction displays, digital moving maps, and a helmet-mounted display and sight, allowing pilots to cue missiles just by looking at the target. It also features an integrated mission computer and open architecture software, making it easy to upgrade or integrate new weapons in the future. Externally, how re-engineered the access panels and wiring layout, reducing maintenance turnaround time by 40%. They've also slightly reduced the radar cross-section by better aligning composite panels. The MK-1A can now carry modern beyond visual range and precision strike weapons that the MK-1 couldn't fully exploit. The MK-1 was used as a test bed for these weapons, including Derby ER, Python 5, Cage 59, Spice 2000, Smart Anti-Air Field Weapons, Laser Guided Bombs, and Brahmo's NG Plan for future integration. The MK-1A has a fixed in-flight refueling probe, the MK-1s was removable and only used for trials. This extends its range from about 1,700 km to over 2,500 km with external tanks and aerial refueling, making it capable of long-range strike missions. It also introduces net-centric capability, meaning secure data link connectivity, with the WACs and ground stations. 
that allows real-time information sharing with other fighters like the Su-30 MKI and Rafale, critical for multi-platform operations. The Rafale is famous for its Spectra EW suite, one of the best in the world. The Tejas MK-1A's Israeli EW suite, plus self-protection jammer, offers similar defensive coverage like radar warning, missile approach alerts, and active jamming. India is also developing its own indigenous EW suite, which will likely replace the Israeli EW systems in future batches. In short, the MK-1A can detect, jam, and evade threats like a modern 4.5 generation fighter. One of Rafale's major advantages was its sortie rate and reliability, but how claims the Tejas MK-1A will now achieve up to 75% mission availability, compared to about 55% for the MK-1. That's possible thanks to modular line replaceable units and built-in health monitoring systems, making maintenance much easier, a critical selling point for export buyers. Both jets use single engines, but Rafale's twin-engine setup gives a more thrust. However, Tejas compensates with its unstable delta-wing design and quadruplex fly-by-wire system, giving it exceptional agility in dogfights. So, why is it more lethal than the MK-1? Because it sees farther, shoots farther, survives longer, fights smarter, and flies more often. In short, India has managed to bring near a fail level capability into a platform it fully controls, and it's only going to get better as more of its systems, like the radar and engine, become indigenized.